simple, lightweight, lock-back folding knives. These still exist even in the 2020s. This sort of configuration, this style of folding knife has been around for a very long time. Decades ago, in fact. These guys go way, way back in comparison to all of the other modern tactical folders we have going around and all of the recent technology. These have been around for much longer prior. Basically, it's just a very simple handle. FRN, Zytel, Zyx, whatever you want to call it. May or may not have steel liners in it. This one does not. Lockback mechanism, a pocket clip of sorts, a blade. That's it. Pretty much. Sweaterco Endura is an extremely popular one that goes way back. That one's still out, of course, as well as the Delica and even the Endela now. This Cold Steel Voyager right here is, I want to say, from the late 90s or so. This one specifically was made, in, I think, in the early 2000s. But on top of these, we have the copycats, if you want to call them that, like the Sog Sogzilla. This happens to be the small version back when they had this. It's kind of like the size of the Spyderco Endela, but it was supposed to more mimic the Delica Spyderco made. This was before the Endela came out. But you can see a lot of similarities there if you're familiar with those knives. If not, it doesn't really matter. It's basically the same deal. We got steel liners, FRN handle scales, lockback. That's about it. Not a whole lot else going on here. Simple, generally lightweight, pretty long, slim. A lot of these are very slim, typically, too. Slim. Very slim profile. This is probably the slimmest one right here. And the latest one I have, the Kershaw Hatch. Same deal. FRN handle scales, steel liners. You guessed it. Lockback. This one's a little bit fancier. We got... The liners poking out of certain spots of the handle. It's kind of just a nice little aesthetic touch, but at the end of the day, it's pretty much the same profile. Simple, lightweight, FRN, lockback. You even see the similarities in sizes on these ones specifically. Now, for the longest time, lockbacks went head-to-head -head with liner locks. Liner locks also go way back as well. The lockback certainly is an older design, much older design than the liner lock, but when these modern-style tactical folders started coming out, and started gaining popularity. Again, I want to say roughly around the 80s and then more so in the 90s with the pocket clips. And they started utilizing more modern materials rather than, you know, brass, wood, bones, etc. We started using polymers and synthetics. It was always lockbacks going head to head with liner locks. Liner locks were faster and a little bit more convenient, but they weren't as strong and as simple and as ambidextrous as the lockbacks were. So it was either strength or speed. That's basically what most people argued for the longest time. You can go back on knife forums from like early 2000s, late 90s, even if you can stumble upon those things. It's kind of spooky, but those ancient, ancient forums, there's people arguing and talking about debating lockbacks against liner locks. It's funny, and then today, there's obviously a whole bunch of new debates, just like people argue and debate about bullshit today. And 20 years from now, people are probably going to be laughing about what we're talking about. Because at the end of the day, does it really matter? No. But regardless, for the longest time, I was trying to figure out why these knives still exist even today in the 2020s. Lockbacks, I feel, have been trumped, if you will, by the Cold Steel Triad Lock, the improved, stronger version of the lockback. I honestly just think these are objectively better locking mechanisms. Pretty much the same thing, although it goes a little bit deeper into the blade, and then we have a stop pin, which makes it way, way stronger. It's so simple, too. It's definitely not even going to be that much more expensive to produce a triad lock in comparison to a lockback mechanism. Big issue I have with lockbacks, even modern ones, it doesn't matter when it was made, they all suffer the same issue of that locking mechanism absorbing both the positive and negative force going on the blade because we don't have a separate stop pin. It's tanking in all of it. So they tend to wear pretty quickly. In fact, a lot of them have lock rock blade play. This one does. Out of the box, a lot of lockbacks I have just have blade play. There's another. These old style Voyagers don't have as much, but still a little bit of wiggle in there, despite it not being too bad. That's just how lockbacks are designed. They have to have a little bit of room to work properly. They don't wear very well. They're stronger than liner locks, sure, but they are a bit stiff. They are a bit slow. You can certainly still flick them out. They can still deploy fast, don't get me wrong, but I'm talking objectively comparison to pretty much every other locking mechanism, especially modern locking mechanisms we have today. Lockbacks, I just don't think hold up as much. They're just not as strong. They're not as fast. They don't wear well still. I still like them. You know, I don't mind a lockback. 
back once in a while. It, they're classic. They're simple. You know, they mimic the really, really, really older fashion knives, like modernized versions of those. I, yeah, I, I like the lockbacks. I dig them for novelty. I like how they're simple. But if I'm seriously suggesting a lockback, it's just going to be a cold steel triad lock. This knife's pretty similar profile to all these guys right here, especially this one. Again, simple, just Zyx handle scales. It's like improved FRN, sort of simple. In this configuration, I'll take the lockback style folder because it's a triad lock. Then I'll take that speed issue. It's just so much more damn strong. And now I, I can forgive it for having the other issues. But in these original configurations right here, eh, there's we have much better stuff out there. I, I already made a whole separate video talking about whether lockbacks are outdated for today. But this type of profile right here, these guys are older. These have been discontinued for a while. This guy's only been discontinued for a few years now. This is more like late 2010s. But this is new. This Kershaw hatch just came out. 2023? New. Brand new knife. Still wearing that old lockback. It's like grandma trying to keep up with everyone, I think. I don't know. I mean, again, I still like them, but I just think they're outdated. I think they're kind of old. But the whole point of this video I'm trying to make is that this profile, this design, still exists today and people still buy them despite so many axis lock copies happening now. So many other faster stronger locking mechanisms flooding the market there's still that little batch of knives that exist with this lockback mechanism the slim lightweight simple profile they're still here i think it's like an echo effect from the really 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 old fashioned traditional lockback knives from many many decades ago and beyond it's like the modernized version of that maybe a lot of older people might be more familiar with these because they grew up with knives with similar profiles to these maybe it's simply because they don't suffer from what I call too many parts syndrome. We just have the lock bar, a torsion bar, and then whatever pins or screws to accommodate it all. It's, there's not a whole lot else going on there. It's very, very simple, hard to mess up. It's kind of like a revolver. Very simple design, difficult to dig it up. It, it just, it, it works more or less. Again, personally, I think these are kind of still lagging behind in comparison to everything we're coming out with now especially the axis style locks. Those are going everywhere now. They're also ambidextrous, they're faster, they're stronger. They do have a little bit more parts in there. I guess technically there's more things that could go wrong with those, but yeah, there's Ozark trail knives being sold at Walmart for five bucks with those things. I mean, if you want to argue that they're more expensive than lockbacks, I kind of doubt that. But what do you think of these lockback slim lightweight folders. Do you think we should be done with them? Do they have any advantages over other knives we have out on the market that I missed? Or do you think they're actually fantastic? Please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe, hit that little bell notification if you do not want to miss weekly knife and gun videos. Feel free to support me on Patreon too, link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Manix out.